what is going on YouTube? It is your boy Tropical NHL back at it again for a brand new YouTube video. So a lot of you guys have asked me to do a mock draft on the Discord on Twitter as well. By the way, if you are not in the Discord, the link will be in the description down below. So today we're going to be doing a mock draft. We're going to be doing a mock draft today for the 2023 NHL entry draft. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming really, really soon. It's like in two and a half weeks from now. After the Stanley Cup final, a couple of days after, but depending on how long it will be, it will be the NHL entry draft. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We already kind of know who's going to get drafted where, but I'm going to give you guys my opinion. I have a couple of hot takes for this uh, draft. I'm going to be doing only the top 10. I'm gonna, not going to be doing the entire first round, but if you guys want me to do another one, on draft day with the entire first round let me know in the comments below leave a like let's try and get 100 likes on this video that would be amazing as well as the subscribe button we're trying to get the 4k subscribers before the summer before the draft so yes if you could help me out with that that would be amazing i'm gonna be posting daily halves and nhl content on the youtube channel for practically the entire summer so if you want to be updated with everything that's going on subscribe and turn on post notifications but yeah let's get right into the video at first overall obviously you guys probably all know it it's going to be connor bedard going to the chicago blackhawks i mean it's pretty obvious isn't it i mean connor bedard generational talent he had a heck of a season playing at the world juniors playing in the whl playing everywhere actually even on roller hockey he's been killing it over the last couple of weeks so yeah the chicago blackhawks got lucky enough to get their hands on the first overall pick and they are gonna 100 percent select connor bedard and get another franchise generational talent they just got rid of Patrick Kane, and they're going to get a new one right away. It's not fair, but this is how it works. I'm, I'm kind of sure that Gary Bettman's happy with it. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be cool watching Connor Bedard's Blackhawk. I mean, original six team. This jersey is pretty sick. So yeah, I'm kind of happy for it. Not the best case scenario, but it's not the worst either. At second overall, I have kind of a surprise. I know a lot of people have talked, have argued about two players in particular. And at the second overall, with the Hanaim Ducks... I have Leo Carlson. And I know some of you guys are going to be like, bro, Adam Fancyli is a lock at the second overall. I mean, yes, Adam Fancyli is a really good player. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Anaheim Ducks select him, but I think that Leo Carlson is a better fit for them. They already have similar players to what Hannah Fentili can bring. I mean, Mason McTavish, Trevor Zegras, there are flashy players in a bit of the same way as Adam Fentili. As for Leo Carlson, he's a bit more of a Nicholas Backstrom type of guy, a two-way centerman, big, strong. I can get a decent amount of points, really good defensively. He's good at everything he does, and he is an amazing playmaker. So I would definitely see a scenario where the Anaheim Ducks decide to take Leo Carlson before taking an Infantili, and I feel like he would be a better fit for them short and long term actually but yeah like i said i wouldn't be surprised at all if adam fancy ends up getting selected by the anaheim ducks it's just it's it's either going to be one of those two logically at third overall you guys know it it's had him fancy league going to the columbus blue jackets i'm sure that the columbus blue jackets also want to get their hands on leo carlson because i feel like he's a better fit over there too he's a european you know, the, the GM in um, Columbus is Jermo Kukalainen. He is a European GM, so he wants to get the European players out there. They already have um, Kent Johnson and all of those guys that are flashy players. So I feel like Leo Carlson as the big centerman would make a lot more sense. But like, I have the Ducks taking on Leo Carlson, so I kind of had no choice to put Adam Fancyli out there. He's going to be a great player, and I feel like he's going to be a good fit as well for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Imagine him playing with Patrick Laine, playing with Johnny Gaudreau. It would be really, really sick to watch. But like I said, it's either going to be Fancyli or Carlson, depending on what the Ducks decide to do. At fourth overall, we have the San Jose Sharks. And I think with what I heard on Twitter, I've watched a couple of San Jose Sharks podcasts. I think with what I heard that they're going to take a chance on Matvey Mishkov. I mean, we got more info over the last couple of weeks. Mishkov is going to be at the draft. 
He's going to be there. His team said that they weren't going to hold on him after 2026. They said that he's going to be free to join the NHL if that's what he wants. So, yes, I don't think that the top three teams will take an, a chance on him. But at fourth overall, they have already some good prospects. The San Jose Sharks would most likely take a chance on Matvey Mishkov. I mean, he is the best player after Connor Bedard, so I strongly doubt that he's gonna go out of the top five. It would be really, really surprising. And like I said, I've watched some, some podcasts about the San Jose Sharks. I've read some tweets about insiders in San Jose, and apparently the San Jose Sharks are really, really high on Mishkov, and they are most likely gonna take him. Now we are here at the fifth overall. It's the Montreal Canadiens. Y'all already know it. And logically, you see Bedar Carlson, Fantilli, Mishkov. Who's left on the top five? Yes, it is. It is Will Smith going to the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, Will Smith is a small player. He's a center. He's a pure offensive genius. We've seen him play at the U18 championship. He absolutely dominated over there. He dominated in the USHL. He's going to be playing next season in the NCAA. And he's probably going to dominate out there as well. Kent Hughes, GM of the Montreal Canadiens, coached him when he was younger. So they know each other pretty well. And if he's available, like I think he will, I'm practically 100% certain that the Montreal Canadiens will select him. If he's available, they will. If Will Smith is not available and Mishkov is, I don't think that the Canadians are going to take a chance on Mishkov and they're most likely going to draft Ryan Leonard. But I think that Will Smith is the most likely scenario and it would be really, really good for the Canadians because this guy has a heck of a high ceiling in point total in the NHL. Could definitely be a point per game center in a couple of years for the Habs. And with the offensive power they already have, all the young, young guys that have that amount of potential on their team, they're going to be dangerous in a couple of years. Six overall, this is a surprising one. We have the Arizona Coyotes, and I think that they're going to take a chance on a guy that is not expected to go in the top 10. I feel like the Arizona Coyotes are going to be picking defenseman David Reinbacher. I mean, the Coyotes already have a bunch of talented prospects, forward prospects, and they don't have much defensive prospects. So it would make sense for them to take a chance on David Rinbacher a bit in the same way. When the Detroit Red Wings took a chance on Moritz Sider, I could see a similar type of scenario. I mean, they need a guy like him on defense. It would be a really, really nice addition. And I can see them taking a chance on him. I mean, the... They did that over the last couple of years, taking chances on players, and it worked. It worked decently fine. So, yes, I have David Redbacher going at sixth overall to the Arizona Coyotes, surprisingly. At seventh overall, the Philadelphia Flyers are going to be taking Ryan Leonard. I mean, Ryan Leonard is the big, fast winger center that has everything he needs to be a Philadelphia Flyers. You know how the Flyers want some grit. They want some physicality. They want some talent all mixed up. Well, Ryan Leonard is the perfect guy for this. I mean, he's a Matthew Kachuk. And you've talked about it multiple times. His inspiration are the Kachuk brothers. He wants to play a similar type of game. And the Philadelphia Flyers have been playing like that for decades. So it would certainly be a really, really good fit for the Philadelphia Flyers. And it would instantly become one of their best prospects on the team. He is a great player. And I could definitely see the Flyers take a chance on that guy. He would be a top five pick in most of the drafts. This draft is just too good. But he is a top five caliber talent in any other draft, honestly. Like I said, this guy has the potential to be a Brady slash Matt Tukachuk type of player. And yes, the Flyers love players like that. And it would be a perfect fit, in my opinion. At the eight overall spot, if they keep their pick, the Washington Capitals, I feel like they're going to draft the Libor Dvorsky. I mean, some Slovaks talked about him to me on Twitter, and they said that there's even more hype about this guy than there was last year about Slavkovsky in Slovakia. I mean, this guy is pretty good. We saw it at the U18 championship. He is an excellent player. Good two-way prospect. He's going to get some points. He's going to be a shutdown centerman. And you know how in Washington, there's always a lot of Europeans. It would just be a nice addition and a nice fit for that organization. He could become a similar type of player to what Niklas Backstrom was for such a long time in Washington. And he would be a really, really nice addition for their future. 
And yes, yeah, still a board of war to the Capitals, I think, will most likely be happening. At the ninth overall spot, we have another surprise, man. Zach Benson is still out here. Will he be in my top 10? So at the ninth overall for the Detroit Red Wings, I have Edward Sale going to the Red Wings. I mean, you guys saw it multiple times. The Red Wings always go for the European prospects. I mean, I mean, Philip Zadina, all of those guys that they drafted over the last couple of years. Most of them are Europeans. And I think that Edward Sale could fit in a couple of years in their system. He's a pure natural offensive player. He's going to get points and he has one of the highest ceiling in points in this draft if he gets to his maximum potential. He was a top six player in the draft and most mock draft at the start of the year. He went down because the hype around other players just got higher. But Edward Sell is going to be a heck of a player. And with all the hype they have around European players, I could definitely see the Detroit Red Wings take a chance on him. And finally, at the last spot, the 10th overall, the St. Louis Blues are going to be taking Zachary Benson. Zachary Benson is a similar type of player to a Matthew Barzell. He's a similar type of player to a Braden Point. He's going to get points. That's for sure. He's a smaller winger. And I could definitely see him play with Jordan Cairo, with Robert Thomas in a couple of years. I mean, the St. Louis Blues are more in a reset. They already have young players. They just need a couple more. In the next couple of years, they're going to get better and they're going to get back in the playoffs in no time. And Zachary Benson would certainly help them doing so. I mean, he is a Braden Point type of player and it's practically guaranteed that he's going to get points in the NHL. And he's a natural talent, natural skill. And this is the most important thing you need to have in the NHL. He's not a guy that's going to play physically, that's going to play defense, but he's going to get you goals. He's going to get you points. And that's what's important at the end of the day in the NHL. So yes, this is my mock draft as of right now. I might do another one on draft day. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed this video. Give me your top 10 in the comments below and I'll see y'all later for another video. Have a nice rest of your day and bye-bye.